Hello, my name is Crystal. And in this video, I will be discussing the patient. No actual names are mentioned. I will refer to the patient as the patient for HIPAA purposes. So I chose this patient because she has a significant past medical history. Um, and she's lived with lupus since she was in her 30s. She has multiple other health conditions that she lives with. She has one daughter and three grandchildren. One of her grandchildren did pass away uh, four years ago, and then her daughter passed away a couple years ago. She is married and has many more children and gr grandchildren by marriage. She has 10 great grandchildren that she truly loves and adores. Her and her husband get lots of visitors every day and they are snowbirds from November to April. So those winter months, they started doing that last year. They go to Florida and um, they stay in a camper on a senior citizen campground. She and her husband enjoy their life and continue to do the best they can each and every day. They have a pretty big family and a lot of family support. The patient is a 75 year old female. I'm going to go into her medical history now and you know kind of discuss the visit that we had together. Um, she came in for an annual wellness visit. She did have one other complaint during the visit which was thrush in her mouth. She states she, states she noticed it um, that she had white patches on her tongue and throat and things don't taste right a couple, probably about a week ago. She denies any fever, sore throat, or difficulty swallowing. Like I said, she does have a um, pretty significant health history and then also the medication she's on. She's had thrush several times in the past, so she knows what that looks like. She is up to date on all of her vaccinations. She's up to date on her mammogram and she no longer receives pap smears. Um, her medical history does include systemic lupus erythematosus, thrombocytopenia, dry eyes, she does get migraine headaches, long-term use of systemic steroids, antibiotics, aspirin, and methotrexate. She has asthma, Raynaud syndrome, collegious colitis, xerostoma, carpal tunnel syndrome to her bilateral upper limbs, keratoconjunctivitis seca, cervical spinal stenosis with degenerative disc disease, inflammatory arthritis, osteoarthritis, low serum complement C4, hypothyroidism, anxiety, depression, and anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. And she does take quite a few medications. I won't go over all of those medications because it's a pretty significant list of medications, but she does um, take those medications for her medical diagnoses. And she's been be, she's being managed by her primary care physician, rheumatology and pain specialist that she sees every three months. She has a past medical history of a neck surgery. Um, the patient denies tobacco use, illicit drug use and alcohol use. She denies any known ex environmental exposures as well. Her PHQ-9 was a four, which is very good for her. And she reports feeling safe at home. She has no known drug allergies. Like I said, she sees her rheumatologist, pain specialist, and primary care physician every three months. Today during her assessment, of course she was positive um, for right eye visual changes um, due to her um, anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. She did have a stroke in her eyes several months ago. Um, she also is positive for white patches on the tongue and through with abnormal taste. Positive for back, knee, and hip pain with laborious atalgic gait. Patient with a few scattered bruises on bilateral arm, on her bilateral arms. All other assessment findings are normal for her age. Um, so we did go ahead and discuss end of life care um, together and how it can be a challenging time for those going through it. But there are programs and advanced care directive layouts in place to make planning a little easier. So we did discuss um, two methods of an advanced directives together. 
We had three sessions total to discuss all of her advanced directives, go over all the questions and the layout of each one of those. She was alone during the interviews. No other family members were involved in the discussion. Now, she didn't really want anyone else to be present. She just kind of wanted to go over those things herself first, kind of get an idea of what she really wanted herself. And there were no barriers identified to completing the discussion with the patient. The patient does currently have, she does not have any advanced directives in place. She don't have a POA or living will documentation completed, but she is highly interested in completing those things, especially after our three sessions. She's very um, intrigued to go ahead and begin these processes as she thinks it is a great idea to have these things in place for her family. We discuss her goals, the Patient Self-Determination Act, Living Will and Advanced Directives, POA, and Medical Orders for Life-Sustaining Treatments. So the first advanced care directive model we discussed was hard choices for loving people. So what hard choices for loving people is, is it was developed to provide guidance to patients and their families facing hard choices as they receive and participate in healthcare. As I discussed, end of life care with the patient and what she expected from medical treatment, her goals and wishes along the way. And we use that as a basic guideline for our discussion. The second advanced directives model that we used to discuss end of life care was the five wishes. So the five wishes is a living will that discusses a person's emotional, spiritual, and medical wishes. And really just gives the patient an idea of what, what they truly want during end of life care. So I'm going to provide details into the responses the patient provided. The patient does not currently have any ad advanced directive care um, information in place or a living will. She is prepared to start working on these documents as we discussed and I provided her with detailed information, websites, resources to start this process. Um, and she's very excited to get things going. The patient states that she chooses to make her husband her healthcare proxy um, once she starts getting the paperwork in place. But of course, you know, things happen and if he is unable to make decisions when necessary, her second option is going to be her granddaughter. And her third option is her second granddaughter. She chooses these individuals because she said that they know her and are very reliable and she knows they will do what's best for her. And they're both nurses and been in the medical field for so long. So she was very comfortable with having those two um, after her husband. She has a full code and wants CPR to be attempted and all measures taken if her heart does stop. She does know what CPR is and she, we also went over DNR and DNRCC. She, is an L, she was an LPN previously and she just um, loved what she did. She worked with a lot of older people. So she did help when it came to, you know, directing them to advanced directives and um, how to go about doing those things. But she said, you know, when she retired, she didn't really think about it. And so she is very familiar with CPR and the DNRCC and DNR. She does want artificial nutrition or hydration to be used. And she states, if it comes down to it, I will do what it takes to have more time with my loved ones. She is not ready for hospice or palliative care at this time as she's still stable in her functioning and she continues to live independently with her husband. And all her health conditions are being managed well by her primary care doctor, rheumatologist, and her pain specialist. So we did complete the palliative performance scale and the patient's results were 80%. She has full emulation, normal activity with effort, some evidence of disease. Um, she's independent with her ADLs, normal intake of food, and fully conscious. And then we completed the Karnofs Karnofsky performance scale. The patient's results were 80. 
um, very similar. Patient with normal activity with effort, some signs of some signs or symptoms of disease. Um, but for the most part, she's able to cook, clean, dress, groom. She still gets out into the community and she goes to church and her and her husband still do quite a few things together. They spend a lot of time with family and friends and like I said, they do go to the winter and stay on a senior citizen campground that has like pools and different things. So they are enjoying their time and able to do most things. Um, she does have to take frequent rest breaks, but that's normal for her age. The patient continues to be independent and she lives at home with her husband, but it does take some time for her to complete certain tasks. The patient states if something does happen as she is declared brain dead or her chances of coming off a ventilator are less than 10%, she wants to be taken off the ventilator. She agrees to dialysis if needed. She agrees to antibiotic therapy and is currently on a daily antibiotic and she has been for some time. She agrees to a pacemaker or implanted defibrillator if needed. She agrees to pain control and anything to make her comfortable. The patient states in her words, I am doing well right now, but you know, as I get older, it does get harder to move around, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. The patient's wishes for medical treatment, and that's um, going by that five wishes, include, in her words, right now I would like all measures to be taken to keep me alive. I do want to be offered food and fluids by mouth if it is safe to eat and drink. I want all life-sustaining and supporting treatments, such as procedures, devices, and medications to keep me alive. If I am close to death, in a coma and not expected to wake up or recover, have permanent and severe brain damage and not expected to recover, or have another condition in which I do not wish to be kept alive. I do not want life support treatment and any treatments that I have been started, I want them to be stopped. She wants to be comfortable and states in her words, I want to be kept clean and warm. I am comfortable right now with my current treatment plan. If it gets to the point, I hope that my family will just make sure I am comfortable and not in pain. I want my family to be all around me. She wants to be treated with respect when she can no longer make decisions and wants to pass away at home if at all possible. She wants her loved ones to know, per the patient, that I am ready to go and I am at peace with God. I want my family to know and friends to know that I love them. I want to be remembered for my hugs and that I love everybody so much. So this is the discussion that we had um, regarding advanced directives, her wishes, end of life care. And she is ready to go ahead and initiate this and was very encouraged to get these things started as she began to think of, you know, end of life. You, and she had even mentioned it is a scary thing to start thinking about but she appreciates the time that was put into this and to making her well-rounded and end of life and um she is excited to get her and her husband going um thank you so much and i hope you learned something from this video